December 2019 in the bustling city of Wuhan in China, doctors noticed something unusual, a cluster of patients with a strange new illness. At first, no one knew what was going on. But soon, the cause turned out to be a virus. So tiny, you couldn't even see it without a microscope. Within weeks, that tiny virus had spread far and beyond the city. Borders were closed, schools shut, flights got cancelled, streets around the world went silent. And by the time we named it COVID-19, it had already changed life for billions. Incredible, isn't it? A microbe smaller than a dust particle could derail the whole world. And COVID-19 wasn't the first microbe to do this. And definitely it won't be the last. It was just one example of the hidden power of harmful microbes. And today we will try and look at some of them whom we may come across in our daily lives. Starting off with the ones that spoil our food. Fungi top the list of microbes that spoil our food. Have you ever opened a bread box to find fuzzy grey, blue or green patches staring back at you? That's usually the fungus called penicillium. Fun fact though, the very same fungus gave us penicillin, the wonder drug we learned about in the antibiotics video. But on bread, fruits, pickles, even jams, penicillium is no friend. These fungi, they release poisonous chemicals called mycotoxins into the food. And here's the tricky part. Even if you scrape off the visible mold, the toxins have already spread deeper, making the food unsafe to eat. But fungi aren't the only ones to spoil food. Some bacteria are even more dangerous. One group in particular called Clostridium, there are over 100 species of it. Some live in the soil and some in animal intestines. Clostridium is an obligate anaerobe. And what do we mean by that? It means Clostridium will die even in the presence of teeny tiny amounts of oxygen. And just to clarify here, lactobacillus that we spoke about in our earlier videos, that isn't an obligate anaerobe. It's a facultative anaerobe, which means it doesn't use oxygen for respiration, but oxygen doesn't kill it either. Anyway, getting back to Clostridium. Because it's anaerobic, Clostridium tends to thrive in airtight places like canned food, be it tinned pineapples or cherries or canned tuna fish. Even meat and fish left out in open get contaminated by Clostridium. How? Let's find out. You see, Clostridium reproduces using spores. And these spores are bottle-shaped endospores. And they're usually present in soil, water or in the intestines of animals. And they're highly resistant. So much so that they can even survive normal cooking temperatures and can multiply in foods left at room temperature, anywhere between 4 to 60 degrees Celsius based on the season and the part of the world. Now, spores from different species of Clostridium tend to contaminate different food items. Spores of Clostridium perfringens, for example, are the ones to contaminate poultry and meat. Whereas the spores of Clostridium botulinum, on the other hand, usually poison canned food. So my point is, if meat and fish and other canned foods, they aren't processed properly, these spores can survive inside the oxygen-free or very low oxygen conditions of the can. Eventually, they wake up and multiply and release toxins that poison the food. Now here's a cool fact. The toxin produced by Clostridium botulinum, which is also called as Botox, the one that poisons food, is also used in very tiny doses for an anti-aging treatment. Why? Botox blocks certain chemical signals from nerves that causes muscles to contract and thus relaxes the facial muscles. No contraction of facial muscles means no frown lines or wrinkles. But it's important to understand that these procedures have a lot of medical side effects. Anyway, moving on. Spoiling food is just one of the ways in which microorganisms can harm us. There are microbes which can directly infect us and make us sick. And unfortunately, the list of such microbes is unending. If we speak about bacteria that cause diseases, we have pneumonia, which is caused by Streptococcus pneumoniae. 
typhoid caused by salmonella typhi, cholera caused by vibrio cholerae and the list goes on. Among the viruses, we have the very common dengue caused by the dengue virus, then we have chikungunya which is caused by the chikungunya virus. Now there's a common myth that these diseases are caused by mosquitoes. But hey, that's not true at all. These diseases are caused by viruses which are carried by the mosquitoes and get transferred to humans via a mosquito bite. But hey, not just viral diseases, mosquitoes even carry protozoal diseases such as malaria which is caused by a protozoan named Plasmodium vivax. Another very important protozoal disease is the one caused by trypanosoma which is called a sleeping sickness. Next, if we speak about fungal diseases, the most common is the itchy flaky dandruff which is caused by Pityrosporum ovale and even ringworm which is caused by trichophyton. But do microbes only affect humans? Not at all. They affect animals and plants too. In cattle, for example, a bacteria named Bacillus anthracis causes a disease called anthrax which is fatal. In plants, viruses like the tobacco mosaic virus causes the mosaic disease. And on that note, tobacco mosaic virus was the first virus to be ever discovered. So that's it for this video. Can you think of more ways in which microbes can harm us? Here's a hint. Try thinking how microbial diseases in plants and animals would affect us humans. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below.